Foundation of Universal Peace by Abdul Baha Abbas. God has bestowed the gift of mind upon man in order that he may weigh every fact or truth presented to him and then judge whether it be reasonable that which conforms to his reason he may accept as true, while that which reason and science cannot sanction may be discarded as imagination and superstition, as a phantom and not reality, inasmuch as the blind imitations or dogmatic interpretations current among men do not coincide with the postulates of reason and the mind, and, this, and scientific investigation cannot acquiesce thereto. Many souls in the human world today shun and deny religion, that is to say, imitations weighed in the scales of reason will not conform to its standard and requirement. Therefore, these souls deny religion and become irreligious, whereas, if the reality of divine religion becomes manifest to them, and the foundation of the heavenly teachings is revealed, coinciding with facts and evident truths, reconciling with scientific knowledge and reasonable proof, all may acknowledge them, and irreligion will cease to exist. In this way, all mankind may be brought to the foundation of religion, for reality is true reason and science, while all that is not conformable thereto is mere superstition. The teachings of Baha'u'llah also proclaim equality between man and woman, for he has declared that all are the servants of God and endowed with capacity for the attainment of virtues and bestowals. All are the manifestations of the mercy of the Lord. In the creation of God, no distinction obtains. All are servants, and the estimate and the estimation of God in the estimation of God, there is no gender. Well, there is, but uh, human beings go beyond whatever forms our bodies are. The one whose deeds are more worthy, whose sayings are better, whose accomplishments are more useful, is nearest and dearest in the estimation of God because that one male or female, oh, be that one male or female, when we look upon creation, we find that the male and female principle apparent in all phenomena of existence in the vegetable kingdom, we find that the male and female fig tree and the male and female palm, the mulberry tree, and so on, all plant life is characterized by the difference by this difference in gender, but no distinction or preference is evidence. Nay, rather there is perfect equality. Likewise, in the animal kingdom, gender obtains with male and female, but no distinction or preference. Perfect equality is manifest. The animal bereft of the degree of human reason and comprehension is unable to appreciate the question of suffrage, nor does it assert its prerogative. Man endowed with this higher reason, accomplish in attainments and comprehending the realities of things, will surely not be willing to allow a greater part of humanity to remain defective or deprived. Or deprived. This would be the utmost injustice. The world of humanity is possessed of two wings, the male and the female. So long as these two wings are not equivalent in strength, the bird will not fly. Well, equal overall, but again, physical and mental differences. And we need to admit that. You know, in my country, women are usually, or every other woman is labeled as emotionally ill because, you know, she's a woman. But, you know, it used to be that's like normal. A lot of us understand that women are not the same as men, particularly emotionally. Until womankind receives the same degree as man, until she enjoys the same area of activity, extraordinary attainment for humanity will not be realized. Humanity cannot wing its way to heights of real attainment. When the two wings or parts become equivalent in strength, enjoying the same prerogatives, the flight of man will be exceedingly lofty. And extraordinary. Therefore, woman must receive the same education as man, and all inequality be adjusted, thus imbued with the same virtues as man, rising through all the degrees of human attainment. Women will become the peers of men until this equality is established. True progress and attainment for the human race will not be facilitated. The evident reasons underlying this are as follows. Women by nature Woman by nature is opposed to war. Um, hasn't war increased with the increase of feminism? She is an advocate of peace. 
children are reared and brought up by the mothers who give them the first principles of education and labor assiduously on their behalf. Consider, for instance, a mother who has tenderly reared her son for 20 years to the age of maturity. Surely she will not consent to having that son torn asunder and killed in the field of battle. Well, it depends on what cause, right? Therefore, as woman advances toward the degree of man and power and privilege with the right of vote and control in human government, most assuredly war will cease, for woman is naturally the most devoted and staunch advocate of international peace. Well, at times, yes. Certainly my mother helped keep us from fighting each other and whatnot. Um, Baha'u'llah teaches that material civilization is incomplete, insufficient, and that divine civilization must be established. Material civilization concerns the world of matter or bodies, but divine civilization is the realm of ethics and moralities. Until the moral degree of the nations it is advanced and human virtues attain a lofty level, happiness for mankind is impossible. The philosophers have founded material civilization. The prophets have founded divine civilization. Christ was the founder of heavenly civilization. Mankind receives the bounties of material civilization as well as divine civilization from the heavenly prophets. Capacity for achieving extraordinary and praiseworthy progress is bestowed by them through the breasts of the Holy Spirit and heavenly civilization is not possible of attainment or accomplishment otherwise. This evidences the need of humanity for heavenly bestowals, and until these heavenly bestowals are received, eternal happiness cannot be realized. In brief, the purport is this. The teachings of Baha'u'llah are boundless, innumerable. Time will not allow us to mention them in detail. The foundation of progress and real prosperity in the human world is reality, for reality is the divine standard and the bestowal of God. Reality is reasonableness, and reasonableness is ever conducive to the honorable station of man. Reality is the guidance of God. Reality is the cause of elimination of mankind. Reality is love, ever working for the welfare of humanity. Reality is the bond which conjoins hearts. This ever, ever uplifts men toward higher states of progress and attainment. Reality is the unity of mankind conferring everlasting life. Reality is perfect equality, the foundation of agreement between the nations, the first step toward international peace. The 26th of October, 1912. Talk at Assembly Hall, Hotel Sacramento, Sacramento, California. Notes by Zhao Straun. I have visited your capital and its gardens. No other capital has such beautiful surroundings. Just as it is imposing and distinguished above all others, so may the people of California become the most exalted and perfect altruist of the world. California is indeed a blessed country. The climate is temperate, the sun ever shining, the fruits abundant and delicious. All outer blessings are evident here. The Californians are a noble people, therefore I hope that they may make extraordinary progress and become renowned for their virtues. The issue of paramount importance in the world today is international peace. The European continent is like an arsenal, a storehouse of explosives ready for ignition, and one spark will set the whole of Europe aflame, particularly at this time when the Balkan question is before the world, even now, or is raging furiously in some places. The blood of innocent people is being shed, children are made captive, women are left without support, homes are being destroyed. Therefore, the greatest need in the world today is international peace. The time is ripe. It's time for 